According to the Drug Enforcement Administration, marijuana, or cannabis, is a mind-altering psychoactive drug. When smoked, THC, the main ingredient that produces the mind alteration, is carried to the organs throughout the body, including the brain. Marijuana is grown in the United States, Canada, Mexico, South America, the Caribbean, and Asia. And in the United States, it's a Schedule I substance under the Controlled Substances Act. Schedule I substances are drugs that have no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Here, marijuana is grouped with other drugs such as heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. When Oregon became the first state to decriminalize marijuana in 1973, a Gallup poll revealed that, among American adults, 12% had tried marijuana, and this 12% was three times higher than what it was in 1969, which was just 4%. At the same time, many scientists opposed the idea of laxing marijuana laws. It was thought to be madness, according to the United Nations Narcotics Laboratory. Fast forward nearly 50 years, and that 4% of adult marijuana users in 1969 has skyrocketed to 49%. Likewise, for Americans who support legalizing marijuana, this was 12% in 1969 and is now 68%. Just about 7 in 10 Americans support legalizing marijuana. Of course, since Oregon's decriminalization, many other states followed, the most recent being Rhode Island. It has taken years, but as of tonight, it is legal to have and use recreational marijuana in Rhode Island. Becoming the 19th state to legalize marijuana. Adult recreational cannabis, everyone agrees is the best policy. The human person seeks transcendence. We're made in the image and likeness of God, and we seek transcendence. So if we don't find it in God like we're supposed to, we're still going to look for that, and we're going to try to fill that desire in another way. And drugs is a way to do that because drugs offers a kind of fake transcendence. The use of narcotics recreationally is an attempt to seek transcendence in the wrong place. It's a fake transcendence. And whenever you seek something that only God can give outside of God, that can only lead to disaster. As marijuana was in the process of being decriminalized in America, United States Representative Lamar Baker stated, I know of no socially redeeming qualities derived from marijuana's use, which contributes measurably to the breakdown of society. This negative societal effect, which drugs have on society, was also pointed out by numerous popes. Pius XII, for example, stated about narcotics in 1957, So, not without reason, the public authorities intervene to regulate the sale and use of these drugs in order to avoid serious physical and moral damages to society. Fifteen years later, in 1972, Pope Paul VI even linked drugs to sexual promiscuity, saying that, behind the initiation to sensual pleasure, there loom narcotics. As marijuana and other recreational drugs continued to be legalized and normalized in society, the last three popes, John Paul II, Benedict XVI, and Francis, have all been consistent with church teaching on the topic. While the moderate use of alcohol as a drink does not violate moral norms, and hence only its abuse is to be condemned, the use of drugs, on the contrary, is always illicit. Drugs are pseudo-mysticism of a world that does not believe, yet cannot rid souls yearning for paradise. Drugs are a wound in our society, a wound that traps many people in the networks. They are victims who have lost their freedom to fall into slavery, slavery of a dependency we can call chemistry. Anytime you give yourself over to sin of any kind, you ultimately become its slave because you reach a point where you can no longer resist it, you can no longer fight it. You've grown in vice instead of virtue. Virtue is the habit of doing good, vice is the habit of doing evil. If you've turned to some evil thing, you're, and you've turned to it multiple times, again and again, you're going to destroy the virtue the opposing virtue and you're going to grow in that vice and then you're going to become truly vicious in that sense. The Catechism 2291 spells out very clearly the use of narcotics and marijuana definitely falls under this. The use of drugs inflicts very grave damage on human health and life. Their use, except on strictly therapeutic grounds, is a grave offense. Clandestine production of and trafficking in drugs are scandalous practices. 
They constitute direct cooperation in evil, since they encourage people to practices gravely contrary to the moral law. And there you have it. Marijuana, recreational marijuana, falls under this, as do opioids or any other drug. Due to the normalization of marijuana, many advocates say there are health benefits to smoking weed, believing that CBD may help protect the heart from further damage. According to the American Heart Association, this is false. This leading heart association, known for publishing guidelines on heart disease, stated in 2020 that many of the concerning health implications of cannabis include cardiovascular diseases. But marijuana not only has negative effects on the heart, the brain is also poorly affected. Children who start around pre-adolescence, uh, 13 to 15 years of age, tend to develop very severe deficits. And these include a very high incidence of neuropsychiatric disorders like schizophrenia and attention deficit disorders, as well as long-term and permanent reductions in, uh, in intelligence as measured by IQ tests. Despite the obvious and proven health concerns regarding marijuana, one of the main reasons given for why it's used is some sort of alleviation for stress or anxiety. You have to accept that there's going to be some suffering in your life. You have to accept that. And if you refuse to accept that and turn to drugs or alcohol or anything else, you're only making your situation worse. So you can take your suffering and offer it to God in union with his suffering on the cross. And now it can become redemptive. Now it can become useful for your soul and for the souls of others. So if, if you keep trying to run away and escape that, even when you've tried to alleviate all the sufferings, you're damaging yourself and you're not useful to other people either spiritually. They, they can't be helped by the graces you could win for them. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep a bigger picture in mind. 